What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. As promised in my previous video, I'll be showing you how to set up UMOD to install plugins and how to configure them on your Rust server to get the most out of it. If you haven't already got a Rust server set up, you'll find a complete guide linked down below. But before we begin, thank you to this video's sponsor, Apex Hosting. If you're looking to set up a Minecraft server, a Rust server, or anything else for that matter, I'd highly recommend you check these guys out using the first link in the description down below. They provide super low latency, high powered, DDoS protected, automatically backing up servers with fantastic customer support. Simply click the first link down below, check the coupon code in the top right. Currently it's Apex 25 for 25% off your first invoice. Click get started and then choose your game from the drop down here. In my case, it'll be Rust. Configure your server however you see fit, order now, and in no time you'll have a Rust server set up for you that you can customize to your heart's content. Thank you once again to Apex Hosting for sponsoring this guide. All right, so in our previous video, we set up this over here, which is our Rust server. We have a start file and an update file, as well as Steam CMD. How do we install UMOD to our Rust server and install plugins or modifications after it, configure, etc.? Well, it all starts with installing UMOD. UMOD is a fantastic plugin platform that allows you to load and hot reload plugins for your server. This works for multiple games, but we're going to be focusing on Rust. In the description down below, you'll find a link to this page, which is my blog and a text version of this video that you're currently watching, as well as easy copy paste commands. Here, you'll find UMOD and Oxide. Just click UMOD Rust download page over here. I think I'll add a button just to make that quite a bit easier. This should take you across to umod.org slash games slash Rust. Simply choose download over here to download the latest version of UMOD for Rust. This will download UMOD in a zip called oxide.rust. Inside of here, you'll see Rust dedicated data, and this has a bunch of files inside of it, which are UMOD. This folder over here actually exists inside of your server folder, followed by your actual server itself, and you'll see Rust dedicated data. What you need to do is extract this into the same folder. So here we go, dropping it anywhere. We'll replace the files, and just like that, we've now merged Rust dedicated data, our existing one, with the one from our download here. So UMOD has six successfully been installed. Keep in mind, we're not adding Rust dedicated data into itself, we're rather just adding it to this folder and they'll be combined for us. Now we've successfully got UMOD installed, all we need to do is boot up our server once just to generate some extra files and folders. So if we have a look at the Rust folder here, you should eventually see a brand new folder pop up here in just a moment when our server boots. So it's currently warming up assets and you can already see Oxide compiler and a brand new folder called Oxide. Inside of Oxide, we've got a plugins folder where we can drop plugins. We should also have a config folder where those plugins will soon generate configuration files so we can customize how they work, permissions, etc. To actually find plugins, you'll be heading to the UMOD plugins page which is just plugins at the very top here. Then select Rust and you'll find everything here. You can sort by most downloads or newest, etc. Things like stack size controller to get stacks bigger than a thousand, gather manager to make your server a 10X or 15X, whatever you wish, vanish for admin controls, teleportation kits, the remover tool for build servers, etc. These are all fantastic plugins and you can see when they were updated over here. Some of them were updated many years ago. As UMOD is a mod for Rust itself, it doesn't need to change completely every time Rust updates, which means plugins from many years ago sometimes work really well into the future and beyond. So something like Gather Manager, even though it was last updated many years ago, works just fine. For now, let's do something easy and let's get, say, Instant Craft, Auto Doors, and B Grade, and also the Remover Tool so we can make a build server kind of thing. To download a plugin, simply just click Download up here. This will usually download either a zip file containing a CS file, which is just plain C sharp code, or it can sometimes have a few folders in it. If it's a zip, make sure to read the documentation here to find out how it works. Some of these plugins need integration with Discord and things like that, so you may need to do more setup than just dragging it into your server. But for now, Instant Craft, we've downloaded. Let's download Auto Doors, as well as B Grade, which gives us slash B Grade, and finally the Remover tool, which gives us slash Remove. Once we've downloaded all four of these, or whatever plugins you wish, simply just move the CS files from your downloads into your Rust server, followed by the Rust server files, then Oxide, followed by Plugins. Drop them in here. Once we've done that, our plugins are now on our server and should immediately start working when our server restarts. But the great thing about UMOD is we can 
hot reload. So if you started your server at the same time as me, it's probably already up by now. We can use the command oxide, which is a new set of commands, dot reload to reload plugins, and we can use star for everything, or we can type in a name of a plugin. I'll use oxide dot reload star to reload everything. This should load all of our plugins inside of this folder. And if there's any areas, you'll definitely be notified by angry red text in your console in just a moment. Once these plugins have been loaded, they should immediately start working on your server. But of course, most of these require permissions, which you'll usually see listed somewhere on the page that tells you what permissions you need to give certain users. We'll run through this in just a moment. But for now, our plugins are loaded in. And if we go up a folder from plugins into just Oxide in the config folder, you'll find any configuration files here for our different plugins that have now loaded. But it does seem like only one of our configuration files generated. What we can do is head back to plugins and we can try Oxide.reload followed by the plugins name. So B grade, capitalization does matter. Running this, it'll reload the B grade plugin and shortly after, yeah, we have a config file, so this has worked properly. Not too sure why reload star didn't work, at least completely. Maybe the remover tool has an issue. For now, we'll oxide reload instant craft as such. And finally, oxide reload auto doors which also seems to be complaining. Weird, but we'll just ignore that for now. Maybe the plugin does need to be updated or something along those lines. Sometimes a restart of your server may be required for these to load properly, so I think let's just try that to be safe. While our server's starting up, we can check, say, the removal tool file and open this with Notepad. This is just a big bunch of options that we can customize to change cooldown, times, and things like that for pretty much everything that this plugin offers, which in this case is quite a bit. You'll find it detailed information, usually under a tab like configuration on the plugins page that tells you how things work. All right, our servers now started up and it still seems like auto doors doesn't seem to be working. That's fine. We can remove the plugin or just leave it there if it's not doing anything. I'll remove it for now. In order to use things like B grade, instant craft, etc., we'll need to play around with permissions. This lets users run different commands and things like that by allowing them access to certain features within each plugin. In this case, we have B grade all, which allows the user to use everything or just allow them access to specific grades in this example. There's a few ways to do this. We can use groups or we can just apply permissions directly to players. As you can see, to grant people access, you'll use oxide.grant followed by either user or group. This is quite literally entering user or group, then the name or Steam ID of that user or group, and finally the permission you'd like to give someone access to. You can also revoke the permission with oxide.revoke, user or group, literally, name or Steam ID, and permission. So let's join our Rust server one more time. And now that we're in our server, we can try giving ourselves a building plan, tool cupboard, a whole bunch of wood, some high qual, and at this point we can slap down a simple base. There we go. Let's try and use B grade so when I place something, it should become armored automatically. We'll use slash B grade space four, which is armored. But as you can see, we don't have permission to use that command, even though I quite literally spawned myself a bunch of loot just by using our admin permissions as owner. Permissions for plugins differ from just being an owner on the server, and that you'll need to explicitly allow people access rather than just having access to everything. In order to get access, look at the permissions we need to use. In this case, we'll use B grade all to allow us access to everything. So we'll copy this. And inside of our server console, we'll be using oxide.grant space a user in this case. And now we can enter a username if they're on the server, though this could be a bit dangerous if people have duplicate names, etc. It's a better idea to use a Steam ID, which makes sure that you always get it right. You can type something in chat and this will show you your Steam ID for you to select using left click and copy using right click. For now though, I'll just type in the starting letters of my name and we'll tell it to allow us access to B grade all. I'll hit enter and just like that, we have been granted access to B grade all. So now if we use B grade four, for example, we now have automatic upgrading for 30 seconds. And as we build, things are automatically turning into high qual. That's it, things are successfully done. We can try slash remove, but obviously we don't have permission yet. Checking the remover tool plugin, once again, 
permissions, we see that we need to give access to normal for normal use or admin for admin use, in which any entity can be removed, such as animals, buildings, etc. We can remove structures, externals. I'll give myself normal access, for example. I'll use oxide.grant user, my username, followed by the permission, in this case, remove a tool.admin, enter, and there we go. We now have permission. So back in game, slash remove, and it says we need to remove a tool normal as well. So we'll do that next. Bam, there we go. Now, slash remove, we can click and there you go, we're slash removing as you hope. Fantastic. For the most part, that's it. If you'd like to look into groups, it's pretty simple to set up. Essentially, if you're gonna have a team of moderators or something like that on your server, you can give access to all of these different commands to that group and then just add people to the group, which gives them access to everything that you said that group should have access to so you don't have to do every single command for each new admin, moderator, etc. So in order to make a new group, we'll use oxide.group add followed by a name. I'll call this mod. And now that we have the group created, we can start adding users to it and adding permissions. In order to add a user to this brand new group, we'll use oxide.user group space add the username and then the name of the group, in my case, mod. Bam, now we're a mod. Let's go ahead and test something like giving ourselves access to instant craft. If I try and craft, say, a hammer, it takes 15 seconds as we don't have instant craft. Checking the instant craft page, permissions, we've got instant craft use and instant craft normal. So we'll let the moderators use instant craft and we'll make sure it's normal for them to use instant craft. I think using just normal should be fine. So I'll copy this oxide.grant followed by group this time as we're giving this permission to a group the name of the group, so mod, and the permission. Bam, just like that, mods now have access to instant craft. If I try and craft a hammer, it still comes through slowly. Let's try and use as well. Oxide grant group mod use. There we go. Once more, we might need to reconnect for this to work. And let's try once more. No, weird. Let's try copying this and checking who has access to instant craft normal. In our console, I'll use oxide dot show perm for permissions. We'll paste this in and it should tell us who has access to instant craft. No players have access. Groups, however, the mod has access to this. If we oxide dot show user my name, it should tell us that we have access to instant craft normal instant craft use. So this should be working, but for some reason it's not. I'm probably missing something in the configuration file or I'm just crazy. Wait a minute, permission for normal craft speed. Let's try removing this. To remove permissions, use oxide.revoke group mod instant craft normal. Maybe that fixes it. Yeah, that definitely worked. Normal means normal crafting speed. So I seem to have just confused myself there, but there you go. We now have instant crafting and things work exactly as you hope. I don't think you need to, but it's probably a good idea to make sure all your settings are saved with server.write CFG. Once you make any big changes, just in case. And that's it. We now have plugins running on our server. We've successfully configured them and they are working properly in game. So we've accomplished what we set out to do here. As it turns out, if you're having issues with things, reading does go quite a long way as the answer is usually in front of you. Just look at things a bit slower. Anyways, that's really it for this quick guide. Again, if you haven't already got your Rust server set up, check the description down below for a full guide on how to do that. And of course, check out this video's sponsor, Apex Hosting. A huge thank you to them once more. Thank you for watching. My name is Ben Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.